Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be doing some emulation testing on the most powerful x86 single board computer that I've ever tested on my channel. Now recently I've done a video on this. We took a look at some PC gaming and a bit of emulation, but I've had a lot of people asking me to kind of make a dedicated emulation video and that's exactly what we have here. Now when it comes to this specific board here, this is actually the ASRock Industrial Single Board Computer. That's what they have it listed on their site as. Scroll down here, and it's powered by the i5-1135G7. This is basically the same board that they use in their industrial Nook box. This is a fan Nook box with the 1135G7. But I was lucky enough just to score the board on eBay for a pretty decent deal, so I went ahead and picked it up. So like I mentioned, I do have another video testing out some PC games. Definitely check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm going to go ahead and add my storage, RAM, and cooler here, but one thing I really love about this little board is the ability to take this CPU up to 35 watts. When this 1135G7 is running in different laptops, it's usually set around 15 to 20 watts, sometimes 18. But with this board here, we can actually go into the BIOS, and I'll show you how to do it, and take it all the way up to 35 watts, which really unlocks the performance of this whole board. And once I get this thing all put together, it looks something like this. I also had some of these plastic standoffs laying around, so I just added them here to kind of keep it up off of the table. But once it's all said and done, this thing is actually putting out some good power for its size. So real quick, I'll just give you a rundown on the basic specs. For the CPU, we have that Tiger Lake 1135G7. Four cores, eight threads, base clock of 2.4 with a boost up to 4.2. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz in dual channel. And we have the built-in Intel Iris XE graphics up to 1300 megahertz. Now this chip will run at about 15 watts when it's not set to performance mode. So under advanced, you're going to go to CPU configuration, CPU operation mode, and set this to performance. Under normal mode, 15 to 20 watts, performance mode up to 35 watts. And this is going to get you the maximum performance out of this little board or computer, depending on how you pick this thing up. Another thing we can do here, just to keep it a little cooler, is go to the fan settings under hardware monitor, and you can set this to automatic mode. And by automatic mode, you can actually set this yourself or full on. I leave it in automatic mode, and I have this set to six. Nice and quiet, keeps it cool, and I'm at full performance with this 1135G7. Make sure you save it and exit. All right, so like I mentioned, I've done a video on this board already, testing out some PC games, and it actually performs way better than I thought it would. As you can see, we have the i5-1135G7. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics. That's the only thing going on with this board. Now, when it comes to emulation on this little thing, I am super impressed, and we're gonna jump right into some testing. I got a lot of stuff to go over here, so let's get right into it. So first up, we have Sega Saturn, and I'm using RetroArch with the Beetle Core. Yobasa and Shiro also works, and you can upscale a little bit, but I prefer using the Beetle Core because it's a lot more accurate. And as you can see here, it is running at full speed. This is DOA, and I'm getting great performance. Now with each one of these games, you're going to see up in the top left-hand corner, Afterburner running. And this is going to give us basically everything we need to know about this little system. We have the GPU usage, memory uses for the GPU, CPU usage, temperature, and wattage, and on certain emulators, you'll see this go over 30 watts. RAM usage, FPS, and the GPU clock, built-in Iris Xe graphics. I'll also have some box art on the right-hand side, the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upscaled or not. So when it comes to PSP, I'm using PPSSPP. We're at 5x resolution using the Vulkan backend, and this is going to run even the harder to run games at 5x with that Vulcan back in. I also tested DirectX 11 and I was getting basically the same performance here. Taking it up a bit to GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. Here we have Rogue Squadron 2, a notoriously hard game to emulate. Now I did try this at 4K, but I was getting some stutters, uh, actually some really bad stutters. But when it comes to the easier to emulate games for Dolphin, you can run them at 4K. Even Wii games at 4K. Sonic Colors using that same emulator, Vulcan back in at 4K. 
So yeah, we definitely have more than enough power to run these GameCube and Wii games at full speed. Some of them, you may have to drop them down to 2K and even 1080p, but when it comes to a majority of the stuff I personally like to emulate, it will run at 4K. I also wanted to test out some 3DS using the Citra emulator. Now these built-in Iris XE graphics do have some really decent OpenGL performance, so we're actually able to upscale these to 3x resolution. Now I test out a lot of AMD APUs on my channel, and I've really never run across one yet that I can upscale to 3x, so this little Intel is definitely trucking when it comes to 3DS. DOA is a relatively easier one to emulate, so let's move over to New Yoshi's World. Still got that OpenGL back end going and it's trucking at 3x resolution. So when I initially started up PS2 with PCSX2, I got really excited because I was actually able to upscale Sly Cooper to 2x using the DirectX 11 back end. It's running really good here. I got the slider set to balanced and everything seems to be functioning just fine. But just like most emulators, there are harder games to emulate, and when I moved up to Gran Turismo 4, I couldn't quite do 2K, so I did have to drop this down to 1080p. But it's doing a great job at 1080p, and I got a constant 60 with this one. So I'd say PS2 is good to go on this little system. Moving up to PS3 using RPCS3 in the Vulcan backend, I was blown away by the performance here. I mean, this is a mobile chip with integrated graphics and it's able to run a lot of these games at full speed. Here we have Demon Souls. We're at 30 FPS here. That CPU is pulling around 33 watts and it's running great. I also tested a few more here just to make sure this wasn't a fluke. Here's Tekken 6, and again, it's running at full speed. We're at 60 FPS. This is fully playable on this machine. And as you can see, that wattage on the CPU has jumped up a bit. Now, seeing how well these first two games ran, I did want to test one of the harder ones to emulate, which is Skate 3. And it really did try its hardest to stay at 60 FPS, but I do get some dips when there's a lot of people on screen. Over here in this little skate park area, it seems to be performing pretty well. But if you go out into the open, it will drop down to around 54 FPS. And finally for this video, I had to throw in some Wii U using the SimU emulator, got the Vulcan back end going, async shaders enabled, and it ran everything that I threw at it. I mean, it performs really, really well with SimU. I tested Bayonetta, Mario Kart, and even Breath of the Wild. And when it comes to Breath of the Wild, you will have to set this to 30 FPS, because if you have it set to 60 in FPS++, it will only do about 54 FPS. But personally, I don't mind playing this at a lot 30 FPS. As you can see, that CPU is pulling 35 watts here, but it is running really, really well. And I mean, given that this is a mobile chip, when it comes to all the emulators that I tested in this video, I think this thing is rocking out. It is a awesome little performer. So when it comes to emulation on these mini x86 PCs or x86 boards, this is definitely one of the best performers. This is actually outperforming some of the bigger AMD APU powered systems that I test on my channel. Now, like I mentioned, you can get this in the industrial form factor like I have here, or you can pick up one of their fan Nook boxes. I guess it's the Nook Box 1135G7. And this is the same chip that's coming in the new 11th gen Intel NUX. And I'm wondering if we can up the wattage in those also. I've been trying to get my hands on one, but I haven't been able to find one that's in stock. So if you're looking for a great performing super small form factor board or mini PC, this is something I can recommend. Either the 1135G7, or if you want to up it just a little bit, you can go with the 1165G7, which will offer better performance. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing some PC games running on this same little board, I will leave a link for that video in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.